In this lesson, we will master everything about lights as well as adjusting contrast in Photoshop. I'm going to split this into two separate lessons. First, we're going to discuss about the adjustment layers and how the tools works. And in the other part, we're going to master a little bit more about layer masks and how to use them to really nicely define highlights and shadows if needed. So first of all, how to work with the lights. We will be working with the lights with adjustment layers and you can find them if you have your panel adjustments visible here. All of the adjustment layers are available here or by hitting on the bottom on this icon, you can open all of your adjustment layers. Some of them are responsible for work with colors and some of them are responsible for lights. The ones responsible for lights is brightness, contrast, levels, curves, and exposure. We can easily guess that probably the basic tool over here will be brightness and contrast, which allows us to increase the brightness of the image or decrease, as well as increase or decrease the contrast. I don't really like to work with these tools. It can be helpful for, for some very small adjustments, but it not necessarily give you really full control of work. A little bit more developed adjustment layer in this case will be levels. Why it gives you more control? First of all, it's split for three different areas. First of all, the dark slider is responsible for the darkest point of the image. The medium one is exactly responsible for the area in between, so our midtones. And the right slider is the brightest point of our image. And looking at the histogram, you can also see how the lights are distributed over the image. You can see most of the image is actually in the highlights area and very little in the shadows area. So for example, moving this slider, I will darken the shadows. Moving the medium slider, I will be bringing up brightness in the mid-tones or darkening the mid-tones. And working with the last slider, I will increase the highlights. Below that, we have another range from the color black to color fully white. And by dragging this black slider, I will wash out my shadows. And by dragging my white slider to the center, I will wash out the highlights. Even though levels are really comfortable and very selective for work with shadows and highlights, it doesn't give you as much control as curves. My favorite tool, and I'm going to prove you in this lesson why it's the best tool. In the structure, it's very similar to the levels, but it gives you much more control because of the curve that exists. So except the fact that you can actually darken the shadows or brighten them, you can also work with very selective point of the curve you have, which allows you to distinguish much more point over the image range to manipulate with shadows, highlights, as well as giving you much more fluent range. You can define your point everywhere on the curve where you want. So that's how you can distinguish different tools to work with lights in Photoshop. So let's do some very simple tasks. For example, I'm going to use curves right now. And simply, if I would like to increase the contrast on the image, I will darken my shadows by dragging this curve over here. I'm not really manipulating curve right now, and I will increase the highlights. The one thing you could notice when we are doing this, even though we increased the contrast, we also increased the saturation, and it's because of the normal blending mode. In Photoshop, you mostly will be working with three blending modes if it comes to retouching images. You will be working with normal, color, and luminosity. Normal blending mode simply affects two parts, affects the colors, and affects the lights. Color blending mode affects only colors. So for example, now if we're working with lights, it image would be simply not really affected except the saturation values. And then we have also luminosity and luminosity doesn't affect the colors, but affects 
on the light. So now we increase the contrast, but we didn't really affect the colors. And that's how you should really work with the contrast if you don't want to affect your saturation values. Of course, I wouldn't probably go so simple increasing the contrast. I would probably try to define my curve somewhere here and brighten it somewhere here. So I know my brightest point and my darkest point stay the same and I'm increasing, darkening the shadow area close to the darkest point, but not really the darkest point and increasing the lights not fully on the most highlighted area, but on the area close to it. And that's how I would simple increase the contrast on the image. So this is all about the basic informations about the lights. And in the next lesson, we're going to work on a little bit higher level, how to really selectively adjust the lights and shadows on your images.